Welcome to another episode of The Larry's Pop Pod. I'm Chris Larry. I'm Amelia Larry. And this week we're going to talk about Ronya the Robber's Daughter. We're going to debut our new playlist on Spotify. And we actually have our first remote guests as Brian Larry and the Beach Mice record their impressions from Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yes, so that means they won the contest. So they got two free movie tickets. Whoever wants to submit one still gets one free movie ticket. That's right. Anybody who wants to submit pieces for future episodes, the award is still a free movie pass. Pretty, pretty good. All right, well, we're going to be back after just this short message, and we'll be talking about Ronja the Robber's Daughter. Hello, I'm Chris Larry from the Larry's Pop Pod. I just want to let you know about how you can contact us and how you can interact with us online and on social media. You can find us on Instagram at the Larry's Pop Pod. That's where we like to do a lot of our engagement. Um, we're going to have some contests coming up, and that's a fun space to keep along with the podcast. Um, you can also find us on Twitter at ChrisLarry33, or you can always email us at ChrisLarry33 at gmail.com. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Now we're going to talk about Ronya the Robber's Daughter. Did I say it right, Amelia? Yes, you did. What do I usually do? Ronja. It's not Ronja. I have learned. Um, let me get you a, a, some information about this. What... Ronya the Robber's Daughter is, is actually an animated series on Amazon Prime. So you have to have Amazon Prime to see it. Um, It is actually by Studio Ghibli, which is Mizaki's famous animation studio um, in Japan. But this one actually was directed by his son, Goro Mizaki. And actually a fun little fact is that this is the first ever computer animated Studio Ghibli thing. Wow, that's a good fact. And a couple other things about this was um, the American version has the narration is done by the X-Files Jillian Anderson. And the story itself is not a Japanese story. It's actually a Swedish story um, written by a author named Astrid Lindgren, who's probably most famous for inventing the character and writing the books Pippi Longstockings. You know that, right, Amelia? I've read one. You did read one? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Which one did you read? I don't remember, but I got it over Christmas. Oh, cool. I think we should actually read Ronya, the robber's daughter, maybe. Maybe we'll do that and report back. Um, And a, a totally interesting fact about her, she is the eighth, sorry, the 18th most translated author of all time. Wow. So you can find her stuff in a lot of different languages, which is maybe why it tickled the fancy of Studio Ghibli and these Japanese animators. So we're going to go ahead and jump in and talk about this. I think it was 26 episodes? Twenty. Yes, that was 26 episodes. And we actually started watching this in February. And one of the things is it was really fun to watch slow because it's a different pacing than we are used to in, in sort of American movies. It's a little slower, a little bit more thoughtful. What do you think? Yeah, um, and especially since we kind of stretched it out and we only did it on weekends, it um, it was kind of fun to be like, ooh, we have to wait till next weekend to see what happens to her or to see what happens, what they'll do. The basic point of the story, and Amelia, you can help me out if I miss anything. The basic point of the story is it's uh, in, in Europe and kind of medieval times, and there's this famous robber who basically makes his living and supports his family and his crew by stealing things from rich people, kind of like Robin Hood type of thing. And they have a daughter named Ronya, and that's who this story is about. And it's a little bit of a coming-age tale about kind of her growing up in this environment. And I also think it's about friendship because there's two characters that get along very well, which I will not tell you because... Little spoiler alert, you see it at the middle. Ronya is, one, Ronya is one of them, but the other one I will not tell you. So I, that's, that's a good point. And so if we think about what this story really is about, um, I think friendship. And it's friendship from a couple of different ways. One is this friendship you talk about. What are some other examples of, of strong friend relationships in this show? Also, like, one is that their fathers are not friends, but... These two kids made a compromise because they didn't like each other in the beginning. They made a compromise to be friends, and they are nothing like their fathers. But their fa- we learn that their fathers do actually have a history, and they had been friends before. So, you know, 
themes around friendship still can be about friendships that are strong and then friendships that kind of faded away. Yes, because they got into a big fight. We won't tell you, but there's a, a couple of their friends. One of the things that I, one of the things I think is just a great comic relief in this story is actually all the different robbers who work for the um, the main robber, whose name is Mattis. So, uh, what were some of the things that you liked about all those sort of buddy friend fellow robbers? Well, it kind of adds a funny. I mean, it already was funny, but with the robbers included, it kind of adds, like, a funny push to it because they're, like, drinking a bunch of alcohol and dancing around singing their little tribe song. Yeah, and they all have different characters. There's, like, a dumb one. There's a silly one. There's, like, the muscle-bound one. They have, even though it's in medieval times, like, a couple of them have sunglasses. I never really figured that out, how they had sunglasses in the medieval times. But, yeah, there was a good comic relief. And another theme of friendship was how close all of these all of these people were. Anything else you want to think about, about, I guess, what parts of this show that you really liked? One part that I really liked was the end episodes. We won't tell you a lot about this because you, we want you to go watch Ron, Ronia. But the end episode just had something, end episodes had something about them that was different from all the other ones. How was it different? It kind of showed a different meaning than the other episodes. Because in the beginning, she was kind of like playful. This gets a little bit more serious. Serious. And it really focuses mostly just on a couple characters at, towards the end. Most of the series, especially earlier, had been lots of different characters, and this really just kind of focuses in on two. Why did that? Why did you like just focusing on two rather than all the different characters? Because Mattis, Ronia, Ronia, Ronia's father. I kind of needed a break for him from him because I think he was he was a little too much in the story, and. They were kind of they kind of took a break from him in the last episodes. That's true. They did they did take a break from him. Let's talk about Mattis the father because he's probably one of the main characters. I would say. Would you agree? Yeah, he's like the second or third main character. How would you describe Mattis? Um, Mattis is funny sometimes, serious sometimes, sad sometimes, and very angry sometimes. He's very emotional, right? Like he's always in fact it's one of the it's one of my favorite he's one of my favorite characters and it it really is a funny part of this is he's so emotional. He's always like ah! and screaming and like the way they animate him he's got like he's got big hair and he's always like shaking his fists in the air. He's like you know, crying, laughing, screaming. He's very emo. Yeah, like when you walk in the door and he yells something, they all just start laughing. And like when he's so when he's so mad he breaks their like part of their castle and he gets so sad it's like you were just throwing things <laughs> why are you sitting down and so calm after you were just throwing things yeah, Mattis does not have control of his emotions, which sometimes can be scary, um, but it's mostly funny. But I see what you mean about, like, that was, like, too much Mattis. But one of the interesting things about it was that his wife and Ronya's mother, her? much different characters. Tell me about her. So the mom kind of ran the troop, but she didn't lead or anything she told them to get out of the house do whatever they will do she told them to clean up she was kind of like held them all together if they if they didn't have any lovis which is her name in that story they just it would just be a big fail i think because lovis pulls the two together and then it would they would just be like a bunch of people not doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah, a bunch of just kind of drunk bums. Yeah. Um, no, and for as crazy as Mattis is, for all his, ah, and just screaming all the time, Lovis is very calm. She's very thoughtful. She's very stern, and she's very loving. Now, Mattis is loving, too. They're both loving, but they love in very different ways. Yeah, like, Lovis is, like, standing there while he's throwing things. Like, Mattis, stop this right now. Stop this madness. Another thing, and maybe the, the, what I would say is a, a main theme, a main point of this, or what I got from it, because we all have our different perspectives, was this relationship between um, her parents and Ronya. 
and how that really changes and how deeply emotional it is. Um, and it really is a story. And one of the main points is that kids do grow up and they do have their own ideas and they do kind of leave the home. And I got to say, that that really struck home with me. Um, but, of course, in this story, she never lo- leaves home because she'll grow up there and then maybe become a robber, maybe not. I mean, she's not going to college, right? Yeah, she's not going <laughs> to college. a little bit before college time. But um, she'll always stay there, but she'll have her own ways of doing her life. Right. And so it's about separating kind of and growing up. It's about kids growing up. <laughs> you're never going to grow up, right, Amelia? So you're, you're the one exception. Uh, I have to go to college. What? No, we'll talk about that later. Um, New York City has some great colleges. So, so that was – we – first of all, let's get out on this question. If you were rank, if you were rating this one to five stars on Amazon for other people to watch, what would you rate it, and then what's your main reason for recommending it? I would think uh, five stars because it's great for everyone. Boys might be a little bored, but sometimes it kind of captures their attention. But I think adults are totally into it because – Actually, fun fact, the um, the writer actually did want it to be a fun book for parents and kids, and they also wanted the, mo- the shows to be a good one for parents and kids. So I think it has that good contrast of both of them. I would say I would give it five stars, too. I'm clicking the yellow five stars on this. Um, the animation, even though it's computer animation, so it's a little bit different for Studio Ghibli, is beautiful. The story is great. The theme song is great. We'll give a little bit of a... We'll kind of uh, do a little transition music. We'll give you a little bit of a snippet of the theme song. The theme song is great. I would say watch Ronya. Watch it slow pace. It's It builds on you. It's nice to sort of stretch out. Yeah, but if you're hooked on one thing, keep on watching it. Just one more episode. That's right. All right, so we will be back in a few minutes. Um, Please enjoy a little bit of the Ronya theme song, um, which I can't remember the exact name of it right now, but we'll we'll put it in the description section of the podcast. All right, be back in a bit. Okay, so this is Brian Lawrence. I'm here with my niece and nephew, Travis and Gianna. Say hello. Hi. Hello. Um, We are responding to the Larry Pot Pop Pod. They told people to go see Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and let people know what they thought. So I'm going to kick us off. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought that it was pretty comedic. Um, I laughed the entire time. I looked over at my brother Scott. He was belly laughing at times. What's the blue guy or what's the big blue guy's name? Not Yandu, but I asked you like five times during the movie. Drax. Yeah, Drax. I thought he was hilarious. Um, and then of course, little little Groot was awesome. I'm glad that he actually played a role in the movie. He wasn't just like there for a cute factor. Um, so to go on. Cr- on the Larry Pop Pods ranking system, I would give it a thumbs up. Gianna, why don't you tell us what you thought? I thought I would give it a thumbs up. I thought it was really good. My favorite character was Groot and Rocket. What was your favorite scene you were talking about? When um, Yondu, Rocket, and Groot were at that place And they're using the whistle spear to kill all the people. Yeah, and so you would give it a thumbs up? Yes. Did you like the first movie or the second movie better? Because Gianna actually watched the first movie today before we went to see the movie. So which one did you like better? Um, the second movie. Okay, and Travis, what would you say? He's had a lot to say in the car ride home about the movie. Travis, give us your final thoughts. I would say thumbs medium. In between, I thought it focused too much on the comedic stuff instead of on the storyline and making it seem more real. But 
I really enjoyed the beginning and all the scenes where they really like showed the enemies who's boss like in the raccoon scene in the forest when he's jumping from tree to tree and like Gianna said where they're all at the uh, place and he's using his arrow to go through everybody why would you and so what other reasons did would you say that you did not like it also i thought when they tried to do the emotional parts they also put comedy into the emotional parts and it took away from making it emotional and I thought they should have kept that bit more separate and put it in when it was right for it to be mixed. Okay, there you have it from Travis Lawrence. Um, one day we'll be writing his own story. So everything that he didn't like about this story, he could write his own. I, I thought the um, animation when they went into different planets and even just like them hopping from planet to planet and when they were going to 700, they were hopping 700 spots and their faces were getting pulled off their face, I thought was hilarious. I just thought everything looked so well done. All, all the animation was great. So there you have it from the Beach Mice and the City Bride, DC Rising. Um, and we will talk to you next time. Thanks for having us on your podcast, guys. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Hi, I'm Amelia Larry from the Larry's Pop Pod. Did you know you can find us on your favorite podcasting apps? Look for the Larry's Pop Pod on iTunes, Google Play Store, and Stitcher. You can see links in show description. Bye bye. Hello and welcome back to the Larry's Pop Pod. We are going to be talking about um, a special playlist that we have been building. Uh, Chris Larry, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yep. Now we're, um, we've been building this playlist and we wanted to share that with you and talk a little bit about kind of why we made it, you know, kind of get some, hopefully some feedback from all of you that you enjoy it. You know, music is a big piece of pop culture and something that we love together. Would you agree? Yes. So, and we really hadn't, you know, in all the episodes we've done, we really haven't kind of dived into music too much yet. So we thought building a playlist of stuff that we're into right now and sharing it with everybody would be a great way to kind of, like, enter a music conversation. Yeah, because um, we haven't actually done any music. And we've done, like, books, graphic novels, uh, uh, games, but we haven't got into music yet. So you can find it at Spotify. Um, it is the Larry's Pop Pod. Um, and also I will put the link in the show description here um, so you can get to it easily. We welcome you. Please go and listen to it. We're not going to talk about the whole thing here. Um, but we'd love for you to check it out and comment, share it about, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we'll probably, we'll probably do this, probably make one of these every couple months, maybe make another one in late summer or early fall, and, you know, kind of update everyone and talk about the playlist. So let's talk about this playlist in particular. How would you describe how we picked the songs for this? So first we kind of picked current songs that we really like and that we believe are good songs. Yeah, so kind of like our current jams, right? Um, so what are our current jams? What are we into? So let's just give, you know, there's a lot of new stuff on here, but what are some of the things that we picked out for this playlist, kind of that are come, uh, uh, some of our current jams? Uh, I like Just Like Fire by Pink. That is my jam. We could listen to that all day. Just like fire, burning up the bed. I love Pink, you know, Let's Get This Party Started, which was like her first big hit. I really, I'm all about Pink. And this song is fire. Yes, definitely. Also, I, I learned that if any of you know the movie Alice Through the Looking Glass, this is a song that's in that movie. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't even on like one of her regular albums. It was just on a movie soundtrack. And that movie tanked, by the way. So that's probably that song is probably the most successful thing about that movie. Um, now, speaking of movies, a lot, I think four total songs on this playlist come from the Guardians of the Galaxy, either soundtrack one or two, or awesome mix one and two. Um, you can listen to what we thought about Guardians of the Galaxy 2, the movie, a couple episodes ago. Um, so check that out. But we have just been jamming on these songs. What are some of the songs from the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtracks? Uh, we like Ooh Child. Right. I like that one. And the other one is Hooked on a Feeling. 
Right. Oh, and Fox on the Run. Fox on the Run, too, yes. And one other one that we'll talk about here in a minute, because it was kind of on there just because it happened to be on the soundtrack, but it would have been on our playlist either way. Yes, totally. Any other, you know, so there's a bunch of new songs. Oh, definitely um, Amelia's geeking out on Hamilton. There's two Hamilton songs on there, right? Yes. So we've been listening to a lot of Hamilton. Also, you can get Amelia's opinion on Hamilton, the Broadway musical, on a mini pop from a few weeks ago. So check that out. What Hamilton songs are on there? Uh, right Hand Man and Aaron Burser. Aaron Burser. Um, smile Less, Talk More. No, Talk More, Smile Less. Yes. Then we also just went to the kind of the Chris and Mary Larry Greatest hits, kind of the legendary jams. What are some of the le- legendary jams that we put on there? Surrender. Surrender, which is also on the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. Yeah. Definitely a greatest hits, Mary, uh, sorry, Chris and Amelia Larry. Uh, Kids in America. Kim Wilde, Kids in America, long time classic. Yes, totally. And Bad Moon Rising. Bad Moon Rising is a legendary Amelia and Chris song. And Rockaway Beach. Yes, Rockaway Beach. Gotta have the Ramones. When do we listen to the Ramones the most? When we're cleaning up. That's right. Whenever it's time for us to clean the house or clean the apartment, I say, what do I say? You say, let's play some Ramones. Alexa, play Ramones. Shuffling songs by Ramones. Oh, no, not now. Sorry. (laughs) Stop, Alexa. Um, Alexa, stop. Um, so, yes, when we clean the house, we play a lot of Ramones. So there's definitely Rockway Beach on here. Yeah, so a lot of kind of legendary jams. Um, now, we're going to highlight two songs and play a little sample for you. Um, I'll, I can start, and you finish this up. I the song I have loved this song going on almost a full year. It's by this Australian, or maybe it's New Zealand, I can't remember, One some down-under band. They're called, very weird name, they're called Chook Race. And they have the song Sometimes... That is just perfect. I love the guitar solo. I love the ba 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 da ba. Ba da da da. Yeah, I love that part. So we're gonna play. Um, do you like the song as well? Yes. Love it on the playlist. It's probably the deepest cut, the one that probably not many people know that are gonna be checking out this playlist. So let's just give it. Um, let's give it a quick listen. Not the whole song, but just maybe a little clip. So here is Chuk Race. Sometimes. Everyone's bop, bop, bopping now after hearing that piece. Um, so that was like sort of my pick I wanted to highlight. What was the pick that you wanted to highlight? I like Stay by... Um, Zed. Yeah, Zed featuring Alicia Cara. Here it is. All you have to do is stay a minute. Just take your time. The clock is ticking. So stay. All you have to do is play a second. Yes, that song is amazing. I love that song. Yeah, and that that you can find on the radio right now. I think it's like number. It's probably like I think top ten in the country. So wow. that's an example of one of uh, you know kind of our current jams. It's not as good as just like fire though. No. Would you agree? I don't think so. Right. Um, all right. So there's obviously we only mentioned a couple songs. There's 25 songs in total. Go to the playlist, share it, comment. Think about what we missed. Um, again, you can find the link in the in the show description. Listen to our playlists. Make it your summer jams. Jam, jam. Jam, jam. All right, that brings us to the close of another episode of the Larry's Pop Pod. I'm Chris Larry. I'm Amelia Larry. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.